Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Retired at 40 here. The average household in America uses 900 kilowatt hours of energy every month. So how much does the harvest rate affect that average? I have no clue. Today we're going to find out. <laughs> the way we're going to measure this is with a kilowatt machine. This will tell you the volts, the amps, the wattage, uh, the hertz, and then it will actually do a running total of the kilowatt hours from when power was applied to the kilowatt machine. I think I'm going to need 12 hours for the freeze time and 12 hours for the final dry because the stuff that I'm doing is pretty moist. So that should give us a good idea of pretty much almost the maximum of what you're ever gonna do. We're all started up in the freeze process. Clock's ticking down, let's go check our meter. Okay, so with just the compressor on, 5.7 amps, somewhere in there. Wattage is 390 watts. And our kilowatt hours won't tally up until after the first hour. So we'll give this a check. I'll come back here um, after the first hour and then we'll see where we're at. It's been a little while. Amps are reading the same, watts are around the same. Kilowatt hours, 0.56. So I'll come back down when the uh, vacuum pump kicks on. I've got a feeling that once that happens, the, uh, the amperage, the wattage, all that stuff is going to go way up. I was going to wait until the 12 hours was done and the vacuum pump kicked on, but I got thinking, the default freeze time is nine hours for your machine unless you change it to something else and I'm just at about you can see right here just at about nine hours eight hours and 53 minutes so I wanted to see since that's the average time I wanted to see what our kilowatts were like right now so our kilowatt hours are at 2.62 I did a little research the average kilowatt hour cost in America is about 12 cents per kilowatt hour so right now we're somewhere around 30 cents after eight hours. Um, obviously everything else is just about the same. Amp, amps dropped a little bit, watt has dropped a little bit. I'm gonna wait till the countdown for the freezing is done in about three hours, and I'll come back and check after that 12 hour mark. So the pump just turned on. It looks like we're at 12 hours and three minutes. Our amps have now gone to 11.3 amps. Wattage is 607. Kilowatt hours after 12 hours is 3.54. Well, after 32 and a half hours, we're finally on the final countdown. You can see it's been going for about 40 minutes now. Uh, vacuum pressure is 491. Um, we're at 14.7 amps. 13, um, 1,348 watts. and our kilowatt hours are 20.12 so it's getting up there all right well after our very long 47 hour cycle we ended up with 29.1 kilowatt hours um, on the total cycle so I'm gonna go run some numbers let's figure out what it's gonna cost us Well, I knew this wasn't the most energy efficient machine, but it kind of did take me by surprise. It did cost a little bit more than I thought. Um, an average refrigerator takes about one to two kilowatt hours per day, which is probably your most energy using appliance in your house. So if you compare it to a refrigerator, it's actually a lot more inefficient than a refrigerator, but that's only if you are running a cycle constantly you know, if you're only doing a couple cycles a month or even a few cycles a month, then it's probably going to be just about the same as your refrigerator. However, if you look at it that way, um, it could, if you're, if you're running it constantly, it could put a pretty significant increase in your energy bill. But there's also a lot of positives to being able to freeze dry leftovers, extra fruits and vegetables from a garden, you're freezing, no pun intended, 
a cost of food which can increase in the future. So does it work for your situation? I don't know, you'll have to figure out based on the numbers and see if it does. This is Retired at 40, reminding you to live life simple. We'll catch you next time.